Good morning and welcome to our series on this, the second Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Almighty God, purify our hearts and minds that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as Judge and Saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. It's wonderful to welcome you to some of our exhibits here as we celebrate Narnia, C.S. Lewis's writing, of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. C.S. Lewis was a Christian himself and he wrote The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe as a place to make faith open to other people to understand. I'm here with Mr Tumnus just behind me and if you would like to come and visit our church here at St Andrews and look around the other artwork and the trees we have here, then please do. Our trees have been kindly donated by Rachel and Simon from Williams Wood and our artwork has been painted by Rick, our associate priest in this parish. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, I will send you a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptised in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Every time I hear this reading, I can't resist it, so just bear with me. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Well, the second song in the musical gospel written quite a few years ago now, depicting the gospel of Matthew, but that includes this story in both gospels. Preparation is everything, isn't it? When it comes to wrapping presents, we need scissors, tape, and indeed paper and of some description to wrap them up with. If we are cooking a meal, we need the right ingredients and the right cooking apparatus. Although sometimes, I'm sure, like me, you miss things out or change things around depending on what you have in the cupboards or the fridge. Preparing to go out on a wintry day, and we know that, at the moment, even though it is still autumn, we would make sure we had a warm coat, a hat, a scarf and gloves. John the Baptist came to prepare people to be ready for Jesus. He came to make them ready in heart and mind. We know that being unprepared for anything can be an absolute disaster. After all, it's, easy to wrap, it's not easy to wrap a present with nothing. It's not easy to cook without any ingredients or recipe, or indeed, you can't keep warm if you don't have anything to wear. John asks those who come to be washed in a worldly symbol of water to be clean in body, mind, and to be ready in heart and soul for the gift that is coming next. 
We sometimes mistake Christmas for being just about the wonderful birth of a baby, as it is really the present of salvation that God gives us. To be saved by Jesus, to receive the Holy Spirit, is the promise of the gift of Christmas. Preparing to receive this gift is what John is doing to those who come to him to be baptised in the River Jordan. Advent each year is a reminder of the preparation for those who have accepted Christ and call themselves Christians. It's an opportunity for those who have not yet accepted Christ to get ready to be prepared. The Holy Spirit is indeed very willing, but our hearts are closed to what Jesus can do with us and for us, but we have to let it happen. One of the reasons I love John so much is he realises that it's not him that makes people follow Christ. He's not the one who makes them have that relationship with God. As I believe myself, and most priests probably understand that in ministry, we are one that send messages, telling people to be ready, somehow give people the tools needed to unlock their hearts to receive the Holy Spirit, which is constantly knocking there at the door. To allow our lives to be consumed by Jesus is no easy ask. To allow our lives to have somehow else, someone else in the driving seat is not again a task that comes easy to any of us. Because most of us want to be in control of our own lives. Jesus, however, made us, knows us, understands us and wants us to be who he has created us to be but with him walking alongside us in our journey. We can feel his strength, not just through the hands and feet of others, not just through the words that our friends may give us in our time of need, but we can actually feel his strength through the Holy Spirit, deep in our hearts, if only we unlock them to him. This is faith which is there ready for us to have. If only we use what we already know to give our hearts, soul, and most importantly, it seems, our minds, that capacity to let Jesus in. We need to be prepared for what comes next, though. To be willing to make choices of faith and not want. To stand up for others in times of crisis, just as the good Samaritan did, and not walk by, ironically, like a priest. Prepare to stand with others, but also on our own for what is right and just. Advent is our time to prepare, to be reminded of the gift that is come and to change our lives that comes with that. So yes, prepare ye the way of the Lord. It isn't easy, but we know that in the world in which we live, What is right is not always easy. So let us prepare, let us be ready, let Jesus in wholeheartedly, let the Holy Spirit change you. I'm reminded of a sign in the gym that I go to, not in the most grammar of places because it's actually in the loo, and it says, success is not purchased, it is rented every day, and rent is due. Living a faithful Christian life is not one which we just have. It's one which we work on each and every day. So be that person who unlocks their heart. Be that person that comes the 1st of January, realises that Christmas is not one event of a year, but the beginning of something great. After all, the presents Father Christmas has for us are not just to last that one day, but to be used for the rest of our lives. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift John prepares people for in the River Jordan, is a gift for life, a gift for us to use each and every day. Let us pray. Watch fall at all times. Let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer.
we pray that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy. We pray that God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness and reconciliation. We pray that we may seek Christ in the Bible and recognise him in the breaking of the bread. We pray that God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick and raise up all who have fallen. We pray that the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. And we pray that with all saints in light, we may shine forth as lights in this world. And we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, as you blessed, as your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came to seek and to save the lost, so we may we come again to find in us the completion of his redeeming work. For he is now alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge in the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>